Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about some basic filtering and basically the tools that we'll be using as well as what filtering is in general. So the idea behind filtering is that you want to narrow down the frames you want to look at. You want to filter in certain frames that are relevant and get rid of some of the noise. Because as we talked about in some of the other videos, the frames are intertwined. They're all mixed together. You could have different conversations all mixed in the same area. And frame five might have nothing to do with frame six. First of all, I want to show IntelliSense. And IntelliSense is a tool that allows you to see your choices based on the information that you've typed in so far. So if we start off by typing a dot in the filter, it'll actually give you a list of all the top level items and some of those might be familiar to you. Property here or protocol, I'm sure is if you've ever typed a filter, that, that would be all the protocols that you wanna see. But there's a lot of items there. So now we'll go ahead and go to the next level. And as you see, we can now start, when we type protocol dot, we start seeing the, the protocols there. And if I start typing in, it'll zero in to the area I started typing. So I typed in HT, and now it shows me this value, and that's the one I want. So at that point, I would go ahead and select Enter and hit dot again, and we show the next level. So this continues on until either we get to an end node of our tree or perhaps we want to search on something relevant to the value that we see there. So the next thing I want to show you is that you can actually start at any level. So if I type protocol dot, I see all the protocol elements. And then once I know what the value is one time, I can start at that next layer so that if I type HTTP, again, I get those values right under HTTP without having to specify the, the previous values before that. Next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and apply one of these filters. So in this case, I'm going to look for everything that has this protocol. I don't have to go any deeper because by default, if I'm not actually searching for a specific value, the way filtering works is it looks for frames that have that occurrence. So in this case, I'm going to look for all frames that have HTTP in it. I now just hit Control Enter to apply the filter, which is a shortcut and you'll see that it's now filtered down just the HTTP data. So we could have done the same thing for requests to find all requests, so I just applied that filter. Another thing that might be useful is to actually apply that particular element to a specific value. Let's go ahead and do that, and for this I'm going to do, use another tool that's called right mouse click filtering. So I'm going to take one of the frames that I already have selected, and I want to do, I want to look for all the get commands in the uh, trace. So now I can right click and you can see here that it brings up a menu and I can select this add selected value to display filter. And when I do that, it creates the filter for me automatically. So it takes the value of the node I selected and then it sets it equal to the value. So I can find other frames that are exactly this value. So this shows you two things. One, how to create the filter to find that value. But you can also now change this to something else if you wanted to look for a different value here. For instance, a post perhaps. Let's make another modification to this filter. I'm going to show you a way to search inside the string for a value. In that case, it would have searched for only things that equal to get exactly. Well, we have a plugin called Contains that allows you to search that element as long as it's an ASCII or Unicode element for anything. So I could search all of them that have an E in it, for instance, and it'll find all the gets and then any other commands that might have an E in it. And by the way, it's case insensitive and both Unicode and ASCII at the same time. As I apply a filter, the the line up here at the top, the edit box, actually gets populated with what the current filter is. So that way, as you're typing away, you'll remember what the last applied filter was. So now, let's look at the frame summary. You can also add these as filtering elements. So I can click on any entry and I can add that value 
and it builds a filter that is the, the uh, filter for that column. So that was the frame variable time offset. Frame variable is a special element we'll talk about in other videos. But if I click in the description and do the same thing there, you can see that it just says description equal. And then the request, the, the actual description that I clicked on, and I can, again, I can change that value. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll do another contains, type in the MSN value, because I want to see only descriptions that have MSN in it. And the resulting uh, information, of course, is that we see MSN in the title somewhere. Now, it might not be where you expect it. But in any case, that's how that filter works on any of the columns. Another tool I want to introduce you to is something new to 3.2, and it's called Contains Bin. Contains Bin allows you to search frame data, the raw frame data, for a string, a Unicode string, or even just hex values. So the difference between this and Contains is Contains, again, is limited to just Unicode and ASCII data. The, the field you searching through has to be only Unicode or ASCII. Contains bin, we can pass it the frame data and then search for a string. So the next parameter is what we want to search for. So let's say ASCII. And now I want to search for the string MSN. So this allows you to search all the frame data, including the payload in the beginning. And you get all frames that... Um, equal this value or have that value somewhere in the frame details. So there are three options here, ASCII, Unicode, and the last one I'm going to show you is hex because you can actually search for hex values. Just say you know that that appears in a trace somewhere. This identifier is actually just a constant in our MPL. They represent numbers behind the scenes. And then this is the string, which is just uh, 0050 I want to find in that order as the frame data. So we apply this filter, and there we go. We find a bunch of frames that somewhere in there, and it could be multiple times, locate the value. So for instance, I can see that it's right here in this case. And um, it allows you to quickly locate frames. When you have no idea where to start, it's almost a, a shotgun method of locating those frames. Another tool in our toolbox is the standard filter list. And the standard filters are filters we've supplied to you that might help you, one, how to build filters, and then two, do some common tasks. Like, for instance, maybe you want to get rid of the terminal server traffic in your trace so that you are only looking at the traffic that's not, you know, involved in moving the mouse around or whatever. The standard list is... Um, fairly long, but it's complete with all the basic kind of filters you'd need. And it does include, as you'll see, IP addresses, so you can figure out how to do that, as well as IPv6. There's the search, which is basically the same thing we did, except it searches on URIs uh, explicitly. And there's a bunch of them there, so, so I encourage you to explore that area. And the last thing I want to talk about uh, fairly quickly here is something we go over in some of the other videos. And it's not so much a filter, but it is a way to, to locate the traffic. And so you can click on a frame, any frame, and right mouse click and get a list come up. So let's go ahead and do this. And as you see, when I click on the list, it shows me find conversations by, this is the right click context menu, and then gives me two choices in this case, TCP or IP. So you could search on TCP, and in that case, see the ports that are involved with that conversation. Um, so in, when you do that, it highlights the value in the conversation tree. Now one thing I do want to mention real quick is that if you have a filter applied, both the currently applied filter and what you've selected in the conversation tree happen at the same time, so they, they combine. So this might confuse you if you're trying to do one and you forgot to deselect the conversation tree or remove your current filter. So I hope this has gotten you some of the basic information about filtering and will help you get started. And we'll have other videos about more advanced filtering as well. Thank you.